we might be okay it seems to be holding green okay i've dropped it to 720 and i pulled down the bit rate as well sorry about that excuse me what's somebody saying craig get off netflix i wonder <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i think it's looking better thanks for your patience guys guys Okay, we've got some updates. On all. Of course, I've spent the morning today at my mother's place at the hotel, at the hotel, at the hospital. I wish I can report that my mom is making wonderful progress. She's doing wonderfully. Every day she's walking farther. Every day she's kicking me more strongly. Every day the exercises get better. The physiotherapy people are really pleased with her progress. She's doing very, very, very well. A few weeks ago they were thinking, whatever but every day she's making progress she's listening here this morning so i have to be careful what i say but there's nothing wrong with this this morning like i'm it's exercise time and she says no no but she gets up and she does it and it really 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 makes a difference and at the stream is over every day she asks me is there any news are there any messages and i'd read together with her the messages that have come in so thank you very much for all the words of encouragement it really really has helped her a lot we're almost ready with her placement. She'll be leaving the hospital probably next Monday or Tuesday. We've discussed this and it looks like we found a very nice place for her to live and we'll be talking about that more as time goes by. Looks like she's up and running soon. Well, up and running is perhaps not the best phrase, but <laughs> she is uh, wrong way around. Here we go. Yeah. It is really, really looking good compared to what we had a few weeks ago. Okay, we've got to carve some ripples and then we have to go around the outside of this thing. What were we doing with the glasses? Which one was first? This was the bottom one, top one. I think it was the other way around. No. Yeah, this is it. Good and sharp. Okay, let's cut some wood. So this is interesting. Do we think double glasses are going to stick around when I'm back home? No, I don't think so. I'm going to use my lens, of course, because that gives me a really, really sharp view. But this idea now is in there, and I'm going to keep this in reserve. I still don't actually understand how this works optically. I don't quite see how this makes any sense. But it really is sharp. The idea that uh, Vivid and Koringami suggested last week, it really is working. Yeah, the other idea, which I've never used, is the jeweler thing. And I don't know what they're called. They flip down. You know, it's a kind of a lens loop thing that flips down. I've never tried one of those. That might also be a good idea. I don't know. But for now, this solution is indeed working. Let's try and get this block finished. so much chat did I have any trouble getting my tools through customs no the knives and stuff were not in the cabin of course they were checked into my suitcase that went underneath and nobody said anything at all they're in this little box just had a box like this with some tools inside and I guess the x-ray machine must have seen it but it was just in my baggage underneath so nobody said anything. And then when I arrived in Canada, them too, nobody said anything. In fact, this time coming into Canada, I had the easiest I have ever had in, in remembering in recent years, in recent memory. The guy stopped me. I gave him the passport. He looked at it. He, I mean, I look like a Canadian, but my, my passport's Canadian, but it shows I live in Tokyo. And he says, you live over there? I said, yeah. He says, what brings you to Canada? I said, a few magic words. I said, my mom had a stroke the other day. And he says, go. 
just go through that's it so no questions no looking no nothing you have to remember that if you're going to try and smuggle something I guess I don't know <laughs> No, I had no trouble whatsoever. They were friendly and fast and efficient. And now that mom's placement is moving ahead, I will soon be able to make my reservation for flying back to Japan. We're gonna wait. I wanna make sure she gets in the new place, do what I can to help her get set up. So I'll be staying here until she's in her new home. And then once that's set up, I'll fly back. It's funny, you know, when I did tell that to the customs guy, the immigration guy, I was ready. And he says, okay, okay, yeah, show me, show me. How do you know, you know, how do I know this isn't just a story? And have I got an email thread to show you would have been the response. But so I was ready for that. But no, they gave me no trouble whatsoever. To their credit. The timing here at this end is uh, not so great for my mother because uh, we start this stream at 4 o'clock Vancouver time, but over at that hospital, dinner comes at 4.30. This would not really be the way I would schedule it, but I guess they have it worked out. Breakfast comes at 8.30 in the morning. The next meal is lunch, which comes at 11.30, three hours later. And these are quite full meals. This is not just some junk on a plate. They're actually serving now good full meals. 8.30 breakfast, 11.30 lunch, then dinner shows up at 4.30. And then there's nothing till 8.30 the next morning. You know, and this isn't how I would program it. And if I were a regular uh, patient in a hospital like that, I'd be thinking, what's going on? But that's the way they do it. I don't know. Maybe the kitchen staff works like 8 to 5 or something. I don't know. But the mom has been eating much, much, much better the last little while. You're asking me, is it a 12 hour gap? I don't know, this is not how I would program it at all. But I guess these are people with an awful lot of experience, so I guess they know what they're doing, I assume. And this is not just my mother, they're feeding everybody. The, the, the machine comes around, the ward, you know, the, the trolley with the food on, and the ladies. The ladies think they're, uh, they look like Thai staff. I think they're from Thailand, the ladies who are bringing the food trolley around. The food isn't Thai food, but the, the ladies are, are, they seem like immigrants from Thailand, it seems. And a lot of the nursing assistants are ladies from the Philippines. And my God, they are cheerful and noisy and helpful and productive. That aspect of Canadian life really has really been a reminder for me, you know, living in Japan all this time with so few foreigners to jump back here into Canada. My God, there's people from all over the world, everywhere I turn. It's a bit of a shell shock, you know. Culture shock.
Okay, that's all the stars and speckles. Let's get these circles done. I postponed them till the end, put off. One balloon still going strong. It's fun, isn't it? The other one is in its, on its last legs. I've got to shorten it. The day I got here with the balloons here, they were floating freely on the ceiling. So I had fun with Clara. We tied some paper to the bottom, dragged it to the floor. Then we cut off with scissors just enough to make the balloon sort of hover as closely as we could. But we found that with the more people in the room, the balloon started to sink. I guess when the air warms up, air rises, I guess, more, and the balloon started to sink. We had real fun with this over the past couple of weeks. And one of them now is pretty much almost gone. The other one's hanging in there. Off oh, snowy evergreens package from Jed. Yes, I think that for you there was two months at a time, right? Either we we mixed up or something. I don't know, but you've got two months prints all at once. Wait till you see the March prints. I got the scan yesterday. They sent me a photograph yesterday of the March prints, and I don't want to talk about. It. They're fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. This series is the best thing we've done in years and years and years. The June set, of course, is carving. I hear from the staff yesterday that the June set is almost finished the carving, and they wanted to know what to do for July. So I had to give them instructions yesterday and the day before about what I would like for the July set. And then Dei Chan, our young uh, printer over there, she is getting the hunchda ready, the tracing ready, and Chon San's going to start carving it. Ever the hype, man? It's not hype. It's true. <laughs> It's not hype. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Although, actually, having said that, you know, the thing that I would like to think I'm doing with our business is, what's the expression, promise short and deliver long? This is what I would like to think I was doing. But I got an email from a, one of the regular fans slash customers slash friends, whatever expression we can use, and he felt I had let them down. We had let him down last month. We had talked about doing flea market Fridays, putting up interesting prints every Friday. And I guess he had been sitting by his computer at that time. And then we had failed. We did one or two flea market Fridays, but then we weren't able to keep it up. Uh, people that are here on this chat know why. I got out of town quickly and what Nabisan struggled to keep up with her work, but we didn't really tell everybody about that. So I got an email from, uh, from uh, like I said, a fan friend collector who expressed his disappointment on this, that we had promised long and delivered short. And uh, it's true, we, we sort of failed in that respect. I'm not quite sure what else I can say, you know. What can I say? We try and do our best and, you know, stuff happens. Sometimes stuff happens. Can't be helped. But also, when I replied to him, I was really not sure how to reply because I didn't want to, you know, this person was a he was expressing concern about Mokahanka, that he thought we had perhaps slipped up and he was worried about us. And, uh, you know, he wasn't just complaining, complaining, complaining. He was concerned. So it was, 
when I reply, I could do two things. I could sort of apologize for this, or I could just drop a bomb and say, hey, look, my mom had a stroke. I got to go, blah, blah, blah. And then that sort, of, that sort of would crush this person. It's no fair to do that. There's ammunition sometimes that you can't use. It's not fair to write that back to a person. So it's difficult. Okay, these curves I think are coming out okay. saw the way I did this, did you? There's actually a thing here. This is a circle. And the first side, I'm carving out these little white spots. And I started with the outside. Well, not the outside. How can I say this? I know. I started with the most difficult of the two cuts. To cut this way is much more difficult to stay on the line. To cut the other way is much easier. Cutting this way to cut outside with the curve of your muscles is easier. So the difficult one against the, the way that your muscles flow, carve this way. I did that one first, and now I'm coming back against it, doing it the easy way. So that I can adjust and match any waviness that was in the first cut. I'm sorry, it's difficult. I'm, I'm, I'm difficult to explain here what's going on, just a sec. Well, someone's saying here, save what I think will be the cleanest cut for the last. I'm not sure if it's the cleanest. It's the one that I can adjust the easiest. What I want, though, is this, this white ripple has to be sort of as smooth as possible. And if I carve the easy side first, that would give me a nice smooth line. And then I've got to use the difficult side of my angle to try and match that exactly. And because it's difficult, I'm going to waver a little bit, and the resulting line's going to be a bit wobbly-wiggly. But if I cut the difficult one first, it might go a bit wider than I thought, or it might go a bit narrower than I thought. Then to match it, when I'm matching the other side, I can match it easily, because I've now got control over my hand much better. So for cutting little circles or big circles around the outside of a circle, or an oval like this, my habit has been to cut the one that is most awkward first. And which one is most awkward? Because I'm cutting under my nose, the awkward one is this way. If I were cutting over my hand like the traditional one, this one would be the easy one, and this one would be the difficult one. So I don't know, your mileage might be different, but for me to help get the finished product look nice and neat and clean, I try and cut the difficult side of the line first. <coughs>
Is that a life lesson? Do the difficult one first and save the easy one for later? I don't know. <laughs> okay, now I have a decision to make. Some of you, I think somebody asked me about this a few days ago when we were showing this. This is a design from John Amos, and I've just pretty much copied it exactly as he's given it to me. I didn't really edit it heavily or do anything now at all. He's drawn these, and I don't know, he's put a bump in this bottom ripple. And I don't know if that's a mistake or if it's intentional. And I'm thinking that it's not so much a mistake, I think it's an artifact, and I think I should go through straight. If he had wanted to make these ripples rippled, he would have made waviness all around the ripples, you know, like there was a water pattern of waves or something. And he didn't do it. It's just this one place. And we don't see it anywhere else for comparison. Because it only appears on this one block. Other ripples later are wider and fatter. Yeah, there it is. It's the same thing here. On the fatter ripple, he's done the same thing. I think I'm going to straighten it. I think I'm going to straighten it. If it had a bunch of them here and there, it would be part of the picture. The ripples would be, you know, more watery and more uh, organic. But that's not what he did. Just to have one little bump there, I think, makes no sense. I think I'm going to straighten it. Yeah, the idea, is it a reflection from the ear or something like that? I really don't think so. can't correct it. If I do it one way, there's no way I can go back and, f and fix it. Someone's saying it has something to do with the ear. I don't think so. It's below the face. I get it. It's below the face. I don't think so. It's not like I have no chance to call John. I could have dropped him an email any time in the past few weeks, just never thought about it. John also is very uh, relaxed about this sort of stuff. You know, he's passed over these designs to us and he's very relaxed. He trusts us to, to make a nice print with his design to do something, you know. Oh, that reminds me too. There's something I was going to ask about here. I've been walking back and forth to the hospital every day. I leave here at about 7, get there about 7.20, and walk back again in the evenings or earlier on stream days. I've been choosing different routes to walk there, so it's not the same street all the time. I used to walk along 12th. Now, these days, I've been walking along 10th because it's a bicycle street. 10th Avenue in Vancouver. Broadway 9th is a busy car street. 12th is a busy car street, cross town, and they've made 10th into a half cars, half bicycles. There's bike lanes and bike paths all the way along it. And it takes me right here. My daughter's place is on 11th. The entrance to the hospital is on 12th. So I just walk along 10th to get there. 
and it passes a bunch of hospital buildings. And there's a big couple, there's a big group, there's the BC Cancer Research, there's the BC something, and there's a bunch of cancer specialty buildings there that I go through first before I get to the actual hospital itself. And one of them has some signs outside that confused me when I saw them first the other day. There's some parking on this building. It's on 10th Avenue, and it says, I forget the sign, parking, general parking, enter here. Then another one says, cycle parking here. And then another one says, cyclotron parking here. And there's one car spot, and it said, cyclotron parking here. And I was thinking, cyclotron parking? How do I park a cyclotron? What's what? It's car parking this way, cycle parking, and there's a bunch of the racks for putting cycles, and then a sign that says exactly cyclotron parking here. And I looked at it, and I did a double take, and I went back, and I looked at it, and I walked back towards the hospital. Cyclotron parking. It took me a while. I did get it eventually, but for the first few minutes, I'm like, parking a cyclotron, cyclotron parking, I don't know. And this is outside a major cancer treatment center, so you know, you know how, you know where this is going, you know the answer to this thing. But I have to admit, it took me a while <laughs> to figure it out, you know. Someone says, I drove by 10th today. I take 12th to get home. Well, there you are. <laughs> Look for the sign tomorrow. It's the BC Cancer, I forget, BC Cancer Center or something. It's on the south side. And as you go by, there's a yellow arch, which does the height of the trucks. And it says, Cyclotron Parking. I am cutting with the flat side of the blade to the line. What's this? What's this? Six conversations going in here at the same time. The flat side of the blade is on the part of the wood that I am keeping. Exactly. The white part is going to disappear, and that's where the bevel is. The flat side of the blade is on the wood to remain. The cyclotron parking, there's obviously a machine inside the building called a cyclotron, you know, one of these particle accelerators. And I guess they're using it for cancer treatment, I guess. They're, they're zapping tumors inside people's brains and stuff. So they've got a parking spot, especially patients who are coming to the hospital to use the cyclotron. I, I assume that's what's happening here. But the sign is confusing. It says cycle parking here, which is where you put your bicycle, and then it says cyclotron parking, which is not where you put your cyclotron. But it took me a while, you know, I walked down the street. What on earth do they mean? Okay, here we go, straight through. Do you think they wrote the sign to be funny? I don't know. I don't think a hospital would do that. I don't know. I think they more than likely, they just had a standard size of, of metal for the signs, and there was no room to say parking for cyclotron patients or something like that. And it just says cyclotron parking here. <laughs> Do you think they were trying to be funny? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
it's still there. Somebody must have put a picture on Instagram. I, I don't have a camera, so I can't shoot it when I walk by. But somebody must have shot this and put it on Instagram or somewhere. Most of my time has been spent with my mom. Are your grandkids enjoying having you around? I honestly we haven't had any time with them. I leave the house here at seven or seven o'clock or so before they are up. I tiptoe out, get a quick shower, tiptoe out, and then they go to bed usually six, six thirty. So I hang around. I wait at the hospital. Mom doesn't need me. After dinner at four thirty, she's sacked out by five thirty. I could leave then. But if I come home at six, it's in the middle of their bath and dinner time. And they've got a real household routine that, that my daughter doesn't want to get interrupted. So I don't come home till they're in bed. It's okay, this trip is just like this, you know. I'll be coming back now again. Once mom is settled, we'll be setting up family routines and then I'll be over here every once in a while. We haven't decided how to plan it yet. Maybe every six weeks I'll come for a week or every month I'll come for a week or something. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Oh, that, so, is it on there? Google Maps, the cyclotron parking, is it there? Of course, I didn't think of that. Has somebody found it? <laughs> Plainly visible, okay, all right. <laughs> it's nice having, having some bizarre story verified instantly by the internet. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Actually, this has happened a couple of times since I've been here for the past few weeks, you know. I'm like chatting with my daughter here and I tell something and she says, Dad, don't exaggerate. Just tell me the story. Don't make up stuff, you know. And the story I was telling her was exactly what had happened. And luckily, uh, one of my grandsons, Alex, had been with me at the time. So I told her, hey, text Alex and ask him what happened. So she did, she thought I was fibbing about this story. So she texts Alex and he writes back, he verifies what happened. So I don't know why. So my daughters have this image that dad makes up stuff and exaggerates and doesn't tell the truth. I don't know. Okay, actually, there's something else, and that reminds you then. Maybe there's something else you can help us with. This would be last night, my daughter and I were chatting. Kids are in bed, we're chatting. And we were remembering an episode when we were playing games together when she was a kid. And I can't tell you the whole long story, whatever. It's a private thing between a daughter and her dad. But there was a game that we used to play together. And I had a policy, what can I say? It becomes a long story. When you're playing a game with your little kid, the kid is three or four or five or whatever, there's sometimes when the kid has got to win the game. And like parents sometimes let their kids win games, you know, whatever. You don't beat up on little kids unnecessarily, of course. But I had a policy that there were certain games we played where I didn't do this. I didn't let them win. I wanted, you know, my daughter to, to, you know, she lost and worked hard and lost and worked hard and got ready to win this game. She has lots of opportunity in her life to win the game, playing with her friends, but it was okay to have some examples where just she lost this game. It's okay. 
My Japanese wife at the time thought this was not a good thing to do. She thought I was beating up on the kids, but I tried to keep a good balance here. The kids had lots of chances to succeed, but now and then to have something that would be a challenge for them was not wrong. Anyway, long story short, we did play this game together, and I remembered it as the game called Bridget. Bridge hyphen IT. And it was little plastic bridges. Some of them were black and some of them were red or something, one other color. And the board was the person who played black tried to get his bridges across the board, and the person who played red, whatever, tried to get their bridges across the board. A simple game. Anyway, I beat her and beat her and beat her, encouraging her, teaching her, showing her, let's try this, let's try this. But I didn't let her win. And the day came, I don't even know how old she was. She was five or six or seven or ten. I remember none of the details here. But the day came one day when she did. I got, I wasn't, you know, whatever. She got me in a corner and I, I lost the game. My daughter beat me with this, you know. And something really interesting happened. And both she and I remember the incident very vividly. She beat me, and there's a moment's silence, and then she starts crying, gently crying. And dad, his dad's a softy, he starts crying too. This is, you know, this is many, 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 many years ago. And we put the game away, and it turned out, this wasn't the plan, it turned out we never, ever, ever played it again. It just, that's what it was. It was an episode in our lives, something we both remember. And we were chatting about it the other day. I, I, maybe she brought it up or I brought it up because there's so many kids games around here. So it brings up this thing, you know. I think I might have asked her, do you remember that game? You know, she says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The one, you know. And I said, yeah, do you remember the episode? She says, yeah. She says, I beat you, I beat you. And I said, do you remember what happened next? And she's like, and then the two of us yesterday, we're sitting here. We're sitting here with our eyes leaking again, trying to remember this, you know, trying to remember what's going on. And then we both remember this perfectly exactly the same, that we had really felt warm by this and it was a good memory between dad. And then we chatted about the idea of not letting your kids win or letting them win or this kind of stuff. And then we tried to look up the game. And I remember it as being Bridget. I look it up on Google and five seconds later, there's the image. And she says, no, that's not the game. And she says, no, the game had hexagonal tiles and there was a white bar and I'm like, I'm sorry, you've remembered the overall episode, but you're not. I said, go ahead, Google it, Google it. And she Googles for half an hour last night, more than half an hour, and she can't find this. And I'm just sitting here like, it's the reason you can't find it is because, you know, sometimes I'm wrong, sometimes I misremember, but in this case, it was Bridget, black and red, and there it was, you know. And still now, the last couple of days, she has been calling friends, help me find this game. <laughs> And I think there's nothing to find because this is, you know, I mean, of course I'm wrong a million times. I misremember, I get it wrong. I'm not, you know, trying to play the hero here, but I am certain I've got it right this time. And it, within seconds, I found it on Google and she still cannot find the game that she is remembering. I think that she is misremembering, whatever. But there it is, we've never played it. And even if we had it in front of us now, neither of us would want to touch this board. If that game was in the house, in the toy box here, I would not touch it, no way. That memory that we had, those experiences, and that, that day stupidly crying together, you know. I do not want to spoil that ever, ever. We like each other, actually. We're, we're good friends here, you know. They tell you you're supposed to like love your kids and the kid's supposed to love your parents and all that sort of stuff. I don't, I don't kind of speak that language. I don't know, you know. Society says love, love your parents and family unconditionally, this kind of stuff. And this is probably heretical, I don't know. I like those people, I like my two daughters. They are really cool people. I like them, I like being with them, I like hearing what they're doing. And I think they like me. I have respect for what they're doing. And I really feel much more comfortable feeling respect and pleasure in their company than I do about having something we're supposed to love our kids, blah, 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 you know. I don't know. I don't know. If we're just simply saying the same thing, expressing it with different words, I don't know. 
It's the same thing on this week. I'm with my mother here, you know. You're supposed to whatever. Everybody loves their mother and blah, blah, blah. For me, the, my feeling towards that lady, it's, it's actually hugely respect. She's probably listening here still. It's become dinner time. She's probably gone off for dinner. It's more respect than this love word. I don't understand that so well, but I do understand respect for this person, these people, what they've done and who they are. This guy here who f was fighting with his mother so much when he was 15, I just wanted to get out of that house and get out of there. And yet now it's fine. I've got, uh, it's respect, I think. Okay, I am talking too much and I am not working carefully here. Okay, what's left now? We've cut, in outline, we've cut. That was easy, you know, actually it just went nicely and smoothly and easily. We've cut all the interior parts here. Next, now I've got to go along the outside because this is going to be a square. And after that would be persuading, <clears throat> but I don't have a hammer handy. I really don't have a hammer handy. So it doesn't matter. We'll do this, and if we finish it, we'll move on to another piece of wood, whatever. What's this? Dave's quote of the day. Everyone's supposed to love their mother, blah, blah. <laughs> Am I being taken out of context here? Be careful. <laughs> It's not just a hammer. Craig might have one. But this table, I mean, this is Earthquake City. It's a little fragile coffee table on my daughter's living room. So I really don't know. If we do run out of time this week and next week, and I've cut the blocks and I do need the hammer, we can maybe brace it against the wall or something. But we're going to, you know, we're going to destroy this table. So I have to be respectful of where I am here. It's not like we don't have anything else to do. Yes, these are things I brought from Japan. I put these wood blocks in my bag at the last minute. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare in Japan. And if so, I would have prepared the July print set, but I had no time. So I dropped these blocks into my bag at like almost literally the last minute. We had started one or two of these in our normal chats over in Tokyo, but I wasn't prepared to get going on the color blocks. The other thing I'm not sure about here is in the next couple of weeks, my mother is scheduled for the move to her next home, probably about Monday or Tuesday. And I'm not sure what their visiting policy is or what I'll be allowed to do over there. So we'll see. They do have a craft room. So we'll see, we'll see. It's possible that next week or something, we will have some live Twitch streams from the craft room at such and such a nursing home in Vancouver. I don't know. <laughs> Are you clipping this? Am I in trouble about my mother comment then? Am I? Am I going to get quoted out of context and cancelled? Have I said something I shouldn't have said? I don't know. Am I on? Are we in focus?
The with the grain one here, I'm struggling, I'm fighting this. This knife wants to go sideways. Across the grain is relatively easy. With the grain, this is a tough one, it's fighting. The grain goes this way and I want to go this way. This wood really has a mind of its own, you know. The people who do modern prints quite a lot, they talk about that. They talk about follow the wood and let the wood speak and stuff like this because people that are doing modern wood cuts they want to see the wood many of them anyway not all they want to see the wood in the finished print like people like me working in this traditional field we're making wood cuts we're using wood for this because wood is the best material to get the result we want but we don't want to see the wood we want to see the finished print as a clean crisp object so it's one of the differences between traditional woodblock printmaking in Japan, where the wood is just another means to an end, and then people who do it as, as an art, and they want to see the wood to make it different from a silk screen or an engraving or an etching. So a modern printmaker would do something like, like I just did, and he would start, he, she would start carving. If the grain wants to go this way, fine, you go this way. You can see the wood grain then in the finished result. But for us, no. So there, there's a really a, a philosophical difference here between the two, the two types of work. We need good wood, but we don't want to see it in the finished product. Is the microphone that good? Craig came out of his room, tiptoed ever so carefully, went to the fridge, got a drink, and went back. And you can hear that? Really? I, I can't tell him where he'll be nervous. He's trying to be a good guy. He's trying to keep out of the way while we do this. I told him it's okay, sit down, whatever. It doesn't make any difference. The more noise and activity, within reason, it's, it makes him more interesting. But he's a super polite guy here. He's just trying to keep right out of the way. The mic I'm using right now isn't the mic. I haven't got it plugged in because it didn't work well yesterday. The mic that's active at the moment is, it's the mic on this MacBook. It's the mic on the MacBook. I've asked him to join and come and introduce himself. He won't do it. It's fair enough, I understand. You know.
the mic is indeed working well you know this these new apple laptops they've got some uh, they've done some things really 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 well The other part of that story, of course, is too, there's no fan noise. There are fans in there somewhere, and I've got two cameras running, we're doing this, but there's no fan noise. You know. The cat is asleep over there. I don't know how much I can disrupt this. You see it? The cat's asleep over there on the couch. It's there like 23 and a half hours a day. I think it's known as Pingu, I think. It doesn't talk to me. It doesn't talk to anybody. It just sleeps 23-7. It's black with a little bit of tiny white feet at the front. It's sort of like Boots, yeah, a little bit of a different character. Boots was an immensely friendly cat. This cat, I don't know, my daughter likes it so much, but to me there's just, I don't know, it's a ball that sleeps, so. They also have, I guess, a lot of trouble. There's raccoons out here. And uh, I think there's a thing between raccoons and cats. And cats don't win those battles, so I hear. So there's a deal. They let her out during the day. She's got a little cat door and a collar so that she doesn't catch birds. But at night, that's it. The cat's inside and no uh, no, no deal. A bell that sleeps. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> What's this? Are the current doi hunger reprints made by young printers? Okay, there's lots going on with doi. It's changing as we speak, so I can't give you a generic answer. This is Rodsan. Hi. Etone. I can't give you a one-answer-fits-all. Doi is struggling in the same way that we are to find good printers to do their work. Uh, Yokoi is dead and gone. Seki is dead and gone. Itakura is retired. The only printers they are using now that I know of are Yamamoto Shun, who also works for us, and they're using... Uh, oh, what's his name? Okada-san. Okada-san, a young printer. And they're also, I think, using Tetsui-san, another young printer in the Kumiya. And they're not giving them good instruction. I know Yamamoto-san is doing work for them, and he has come to us for a model to look for. But the doi Hunga people don't have good models themselves. So I don't know what they're telling these young kids. You know, when we hired out people to work with the doi blocks, we spent hours and days looking for good models to use. But the doi hunga people don't have that kind of sense of history. So is the stuff good or bad? I can't give you a one-size-fits-all answer. I don't think it's tanukis. I think they're they're raccoons. Isn't that just the animal? It's a raccoon. <laughs> okay, I think we're done on the cutting with this. If, as I said, if I were back at the ranch, the next thing now would be uh, s scooping this out. But I'm not there, so what I'll do, I can jump ahead a step and we'll do part of step three. I'm gonna clear the V cut against this thing. Thank you. 
we can get a bit of crunch crunch here. Somebody's meshing headphones on. Let me pop you a link, one second. I got an email this morning from a group of people in London. Let me see if I can find it, hang on a sec. Here we are. Let me pop this link in. One sec. Let me get back to the channel. One sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. Here we are. Here's a link. The link I received from the people who are organizing this exhibition. The exhibition was set up last year in Sweden, and it ran there for a while, and now it's running in London. And I haven't seen the exhibition, but if you follow that link that I just poked you, and if you look at the list of participants, Someone's asking, Dave, have I learned what ASMR is? Well, I, I whatever the dictionary definition, yes, I don't. I don't seem to get it myself. I'm not so interested in this. Back when this blew up a few years ago and people started talking about this, I looked at it, I listened to a couple of videos, a barber thing with a clip clip and a girl with a balloon, but I don't seem to get it, whatever. Anyway, I'm in their exhibition, and I'm in there in what they call the unintentional ASMR. And I guess it's people that the ASMR people seem to think what the person is doing is ASMR, and I'm not thinking so. So when the exhibition was going on in Sweden, and this is a year or so ago, they said, can we use your videos? And I'm like, oh, whatever, okay, you know, I don't care. And now the exhibition has moved to London and they said, can we use your videos? And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But we have not, and we are not going to tag our own videos with ASMR. have a mess to clean up here today.
Someone's asking Nate to show how's mom doing. Mom is very stable, improving day by day. She's now in the rehab stage of this. Her medical issues are behind her. For those who don't know, mom had a small stroke. She had a stent put into an artery to improve the blood flow to the brain. This wasn't the kind of stroke that was from a clot or a pop or whatever. It was a blood flow being stopped to the brain so that there wasn't enough blood going through. And she kept falling unconscious, stuff like this. So it's lucky. They opened up her artery, lots of blood to the brain, and she is now rehabbing, improving day by day by day. We're not out of the woods. She, like, she hasn't got quite full recovery of knitting yet, stuff like this. And at 95 years old, recovery is, you know, it's a, whatever, it is what it is. But she is extremely fighting, having the time of her life in one sense. I mean, she's not having any fun, but she's also really got something to live for here. How can I be doing Japanese printmaking if I'm not Japanese? Well, the, the techniques themselves have nothing to do with ethnicity or the color of one's hair. A technique is what it is, and anybody from any part of the world can, of course, do this, as they are now doing. It's like saying, how can you be interested in speaking Japanese if you're not Japanese? It's not like only Japanese people are allowed to do that. You like Italian food? What's this? <laughs> Why no? Somebody should link this. I know a dude I know called John Becker. He put a uh, post on Facebook, and for some reason, Facebook decided to send it to me out of the blue. I don't know why, the, the quote, I think maybe they tied up with here, Twitch, whatever. Anyway, Facebook sent me a, a link, and someone you know, namely John Becker, has posted something. Maybe because it was about Japanese content. This is interesting. Maybe Facebook added up two things. Dave Bull and John Becker are connected on Facebook. John made a post about Japan, so they sent it to me. John, you're there. Can you send a link to that one, the one about the word order thing, going backwards and forwards? Is it visible to people who are not on Facebook? The one about the word order. There was a Vietnamese sentence and there was a, a French sentence and then there was a Japanese sentence. But it was cool, the person who made that image, whatever, yeah, it was talking about one, it was a very carefully constructed example, and it was between English and Vietnamese, and the word order was basically the same. The English and French had the word order basically the same. And they had picked very carefully a sentence that in Japanese the word order was completely, totally reversed from the English. It's kind of common because in Japanese the verb is always at the end, quote unquote, always at the end, and the subject is always at the beginning, quote unquote. And in English that's not always the case.
And it was uh, it was an interesting example. I mean, not all Japanese is like that, but it's it's entertaining. So. But uh, the point I, I did post on that after John, after John sent it, or after after Facebook sent it to me and I read it, I made a comment on it. And it's very much a thing. If you're the kind of person who is doing simultaneous interpretation, and I have tried to do this in an amateur way, not obviously not on a stage at the United Nations, but you know, translating between people in our workshop or something like this. I have tried to do simultaneous interpretation, and it's it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible for the reason that, that somebody's posted here. Yeah. And then there's that English. There's that thing that people used to do. What what TV program was it that whatever? There was a, a catchphrase in English where people would say something with a verb, and they would say, "Yeah, I really like pizza," not. They would add the word "not" after the after the sentence, which, of course, totally, absolutely changed the meaning. That's how Japanese works in normal life. The verb is at the end, and even when you're saying the verb, you don't yet know if it's going to be a positive or a negative until the very last whisper of sound at the end of the sentence tells you it's positive or it's negative. So every Japanese sentence works like that. Not. <laughs> you try simultaneous translating this when you can't get started until you've heard how this is going to turn out. It's absolutely insane. There's probably other languages that do it too. I have no idea, but that they... German, they do that in German, do they? I have no idea. I know nothing, 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 nothing about German. So Japanese is easy to learn. <laughs> It's good fun. It's really, really good fun, you know. I'm doing this, I'm learning Japanese as I go, but because there's no stress, because I'm not doing tests, because there's no exams for me, because nobody cares, I can screw up as much as I want and it doesn't matter, that means I can do this with no stress. It's totally okay. <laughs> I must have told you the other day. <laughs> I've had a couple of... <laughs> I've had a couple of Skype conversations with my team in Tokyo, and I have to have those conversations in the evening here, because I'm at the hospital during the day, and anyway, Tokyo is asleep most of the day. So I get back from the hospital, 7.30, have dinner with my daughter, whatever, and then we sit here at 9 o'clock, and it's time to Skype with Tokyo. So I've been here a few days, a couple of weeks ago, whatever, and it's, we start a Skype with my team in Tokyo. And I first start talking to Watanabe-san and uh, no, Okamura-san, our two new ones. And they speak English really well. So we just chat in English. They can handle it very, very well. My daughter's sitting on the couch here, and she's, you're, you're talking English to your staff. You know, and I'm like, well, these girls have speak English really quite well. No problem, no problem, no problem. That's the cat bell. He just got up. Let's see, if we can, let's see if we can get a shot of the cat. That's the cat. Anyway, the deal is, so after I talk to those two girls, one of our other Japanese staff comes on, and Dave starts speaking Japanese to him. And I've been here like a week or something, and Japanese, I've been at the hospital, just Japanese has erased itself from my brain. And I am struggling to speak even the simplest Japanese. My daughter says, like she's watching this, you know, I've been there 35 years, and she's like, that's all you can do after 35 years? <laughs> okay, the cat just left. He went out the, the door, the cat door, and I presume he's going to poop or something, and he's going to come back, which means he's going to walk to the kitchen to get some growlies. So let's catch him when he comes back. Let me get ready. What we'll have to do, we'll have to take this, Where are we? Here we are. That's the zone. He will be coming through that zone. We'll catch him when he comes back.
alert me when you hear the cat noise again. <laughs> Show and tell for cats, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's funny, I don't know about the pooping. There is a cat box here. There is a litter box here. Because I think it's partly for nighttime. As I said, they don't let the cat out at night because uh, they're afraid it's going to become raccoon dinner or something, I guess. I'm watching an anime where a girl was making a book and she used woodblock printmaking to make a book. I haven't heard of that. Have you got a link or a name or something like that you can remind us about this? Mr. The Murs, can you give us more information about that one? It sounds interesting. Someone says this would be a terrible way to make a book. Actually, it's it's a fairly common thing in Japan. Uh, they don't actually print the books, you know, all by woodblock printmaking, but to make the images, a designer will maybe just make woodblock prints for page one, page two, page three, page four, make a print, and then the bookmaking company photographs it and sends them out as normal books. It's a thing. Wood, uh, you know, children's books or another book made with woodblock printed images. You don't actually woodblock print the 10,000 copies but you make prints to make a certain type of illustration. It's a thing. It's a thing.
different sound to show. With the grain, with the grain sound, smooth. And across the grain we get our crunch crunch. Oh, speaking of, that link I just sent you, I got another email the other day. Did we talk about the one from Hungary? Did I mention this? I don't think it's a link I can send you, but there's an email I got from Hungary a couple of days ago. How many characters can I paste? Here. This is from Budapest, and I can't read the actual title because it's all in Hungarian, but this was a request that came in by email. the other day. I don't have a link because what it was, it was a screenshot of one of our videos. And it was just a screenshot from one of the Great Wave videos where Dave was sitting there like this. What did I do? I sat there like this, holding up the wood block for the key block for the Great Wave. You can see the pattern, you can see the wave. It's not the print, it's the block. And I was sort of having a dorky face, something like this. And that's the picture that they want to use. So I'm like, Sure, what am I going to do? Say no? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So I guess, and then, then I said, yes, it's okay, whatever you like. So they sent back a contract. I signed the contract and sent it off. And uh, they sent back this morning, saying, okay, good, good, thanks very much. And there isn't going to be a physical book. This apparently is going to be a, a, an e-book that becomes a textbook for art class. And then another email came in the other day, last week, while I wasn't there. This one came in to Aoyama-san, my, my partner back there in, in Tokyo. And a request came in from the Japanese Foreign Ministry. They're preparing for some kind of upcoming G7 meeting. And as part of this, they're looking for stuff to present to delegates or whatever. I have no idea what the details. And they want to use... <laughs> not our prints, they want to use images of some of our prints. Hmm. They're going to do pamphlets and handouts for the G7 meetings, and they want to use images of our prints. Something like, you know, here's how Japanese culture is so attractive to the world that all kinds of Westerners are coming to Japan to do study Japanese culture. And there'll be me and some other guy. There's a guy doing boat building, somebody else is doing something else. But they don't want the prints. They just want pictures of the prints. And then this year, of course, we're in the English language textbooks for a few years. We're in the grade, the grade five English language textbook. I forget, we're, we're one of the, you know, what do you call it? Uh, you turn a double page spread and there's a there's a work on it for one week the kids study that so we're in the english textbooks this year so these things come up now and again it's for fun
It's funny talking about the foreign ministry because years and years and years ago, my God, I don't know, 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, when I was making the Poets Prince, I did, as part of my own promotional attempts, I wrote to the foreign ministry in, in an English letter with a Japanese letter, and I put in some of the Poets Prince, and I suggested this idea that they could use my woodbuck prints as part of, you know, gifts for foreign dignitaries, blah, 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 blah. And I got back a polite little letter <laughs> saying no. And the upshot is, of course, they want, they give gifts every time there's a G7 or meeting, whatever, every time ambassadors come over the foreign ministry, of course, it gives them kinds of gifts, whatever, it's a normal deal. They must have a regular budget for this. But the answer came back, they would rather prefer gifts. You know, they're going to give the Canadian ambassador a gift. They want something made by a Japanese craftsman, not by a Canadian craftsman. <laughs> so I, guess, I mean, the Canadian ambassador is bringing a gift made by a Canadian craftsman, you know, some Inuit or something, of course, obviously. And the Japanese foreign ministry felt that it wasn't so appropriate to be giving them a gift by a Canadian craftsman in Japan. So like, okay, of course, I get it, I get it, I get it. Let that one go, you know, win some, lose some, you know. So since that time, I've let that one go. I haven't made any attempts to, to play that game at all, you know, so. But wouldn't that be a funny scene, the Canadian ambassadors? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, whatever. This grain does not want to work either way. Our cat hasn't come back yet. Did you hear him? We're coming along here with this. I'm actually managed to get a little bit of work done today. Haven't got too distracted by this stream. What happens to the block if you carve too close to the line and the wood splits into the print? Well, we fix it. It's just a piece of wood. It's all malleable. You can put inserts in. We don't so much use glue for fixing stuff here. But if I do make a mistake, we would cut out a larger area, tap in a new piece of wood, and carve the new piece of wood. It's done all the time. There's a link here someone's going to say. Yeah, here we are. The bot has a link here. I think this chat stream is living for the day when I do that, when I slice through cut my thumb, spurt blood all over the place, then dig into the wood and he needs a repair. That'll make everybody's day. You know, that'll be the real chat stream that everybody wants to watch. It'll be the most clipped thing we've ever seen. It'll happen one day. I hear children's voices outside. It could be, you know, the kids are going to be home soon. It's oh, it's five thirty already. Ho 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 ho. It's five thirty. I hear kids' voices. We may be at the end of our stream here. Let me finish this thing off here. Let me finish this bit, and then we'll wrap it up here. They are. They're home. Ooh, wow, 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 wow. 
Yay! Clara, come on, come and say hello to everybody. Whoa! Whoa! This is not the cat. We're still live. Is it okay? If, is it okay if Clara comes in? No, that's okay. Clara Chan, come on, come up behind me here. Careful, the squires. Come behind me. Come sit here for a second. Come and sit down for a second. Can you sit here for a moment? Do you see the screen here? Sit up just a little bit, please. Up on the table. Do you see yourself here? Say hello. Actually, my friends are watching right now. Can you say hello to my friends? That is my friend. Well, no, no. <laughs> it's a picture. It's a picture, but actually people are watching. This is, well, I'll tell you what. You know about cameras, right? Do you see the camera up here? Well, this is another camera, and people are watching. And look here. Look, message. Look, look, look. Hello, Clara. Hello, Clara. Yeah. I've got many, many friends watching. <laughs> no, okay. We don't want to embarrass the little lady here. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> there you go. Where are you? Playing in the park, were you? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. There's the other guy. Will he come over? He won't come this close. The, the little guy is still afraid of me a little bit. Oh, and there's the cat. They've been wanting to see the cat. We missed him. He just saw his tail disappear. <laughs> What a pain. Look, we can turn this. This is Archie, my grand, uh, my grandson. Here we go, it's the little guy. And that's Humi. Oh, there we are. There's the family. It's my daughter, Humi, with her two children. Yeah, he's waving. Hi. I can't see where the camera is here. Oh, okay. So, so there you okay, go. Good, good. Hi. What they mostly wanted to see was the cat. He's been sleeping all the time. So, you know, so, 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 so. No, he's been, he was sleeping here all the time. And then he got up and we heard a bell. Yeah. And then he's, he quickly went out the cat door. So. It's two glasses for carving. Okay. That's what you do? Mm, it's what the, the chat here showed me how to do this. So oh. so t I'll tell you about that later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I gotta get out of here. You see what's happening. I can't disturb their privacy for too much. It's 5.30 here. So we're gonna wrap this up. I'll be back here again two days from now at the normal time. They're gonna let me use the room here. But the one after that, I may have to skip one because my sister is working on the cruise ships and I may have to take care of my mother for the afternoon. Anyway, for right now, Clara and I... Oh, okay, here he goes. Okay, one sec. Let me pull that up. Then. Okay. It's all like a black mess. It's hard to see there. Right. The other way. Here we go. Yeah. There. Bingo. This is the animal. <laughs> this is the animal. Pingu. Yeah, Pingu. It's a he, right? Yeah, it's a he. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a big blob. It sleeps 23-7. It just sits and sleeps 23 hours yeah. out of the day and eats the yeah. rest of the day. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 so. Okay, thanks for I really do get out of here. This is okay. Clara, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. See you in a couple of days. Thank you very, very much. I've had good fun today chatting, and I've actually got some work done. See you next time. Bye for now. Say goodbye, Clara. Bye. Bye-bye.